Spawning salmon are an icon for the Pacific Northwest. While city light dams on the Skagit River don't block fish passage, they have reduced existing downstream spawning areas because of flood control and power generation. City Light has spent a lot of time and money restoring that lost spawning habitat by preserving existing natural areas and by constructing new ones. The power line spawning channel is a combination of both. Built on land used for the electric utilities transmission lines to bring power from the generation project to Seattle, the man-made aquatic channel joins an existing natural slough and provides fish an off-river area to lay eggs. The cost was nearly $300,000. Off-channel habitat is formed through flooding of rivers. Because we have our project in the headwaters, we no longer have the magnitude or the frequency of floods that we once did. So the river is not capable of building this type of habitat, which is essential for coho and chum production. Since 2004, this spawning channel has attracted thousands of salmon. The restoration not only attracted salmon, but another dam builder, the beaver. The quality of habitat within these channels is ideal for, for beaver. Jason Hall is a research fish biologist with the Federal Marine Fisheries Division of NOAA. He's been working with City Light biologist Dave Flug at the Powerline Channel site. It turns out that the gently flowing water and the restored vegetation was perfect for the aquatic rodents known for their big wood gnawing front teeth, wide flat tails, and their construction of dams. I think they build dams for several reasons. Uh, one would be to provide habitat and a secure uh, location from predators, and also the the um, the increased uh, surface area of water produces more uh, habitat for their food sources to grow. They really like willow, cottonwood, a lot of aquatic vegetation uh, that grows in and around the riparian area. The beaver dens block fish, and City Light built the spawning channel for fish, not beaver. So why not just rip out the dams? Well, you've probably heard the phrase, busy as a beaver. They can uh, re completely rebuild or uh, build new dams overnight. Uh, they build very sturdy dams, which require uh, sometimes up to eight hours to remove one dam. So the federal fish biologist in City Light decided to experiment with a device that tricks the beaver into thinking it has successfully dammed the small channel. It's this box called a beaver deceiver. Turns out, beaver dam building behavior is triggered in part by the sound of flowing water. This large box allows the flow to continue, but reduces the sound. In addition, it does constrict water flow enough to allow a pond to form. In this experiment, the beaver have gratefully incorporated the box into their dam structure. However, the deceiver is really a fish ladder and culvert, which provides this large pipe for the adult fish to swim from the river into the spawning channel. In the spring, the small fry are able to bypass the beaver dam by way of a fish ladder constructed inside the box. The beaver have their protection and increased food source, and the fish have passageway to and from the spawning channel. Turns out, the beaver actually helped make the spawning channel more productive. They, they really heavily reinforce the dam, and that helps us uh, push more water through the fish ladder, which increases our fish passage. We had problems with flow before due to seepage, and the uh, beaver have effectively uh, channeled all the water through the, the fish ladder now. If this experiment is deemed a success by the biologist, it could be a big benefit for other agencies trying to restore natural habitat. Another local agency tackled the beaver problem by building a permanent structure that cost about $100,000. The beaver deceiver costs about $500. Peter Clark reporting for Seattle City Light.